<laughs> yep. Complete amateur hour. That's what this is right now. Let's start that again. <laughs> Hi, my name is Brendan, and this is Accidental Origin, your weekly writing web show. Um, yeah. <laughs> We're going to be working on Fear the Siren today. I have about one third left of editing to go. You'll see a current progress right up there, 12 of 18. Um, so we're going to work through that because I want to get things done. Um, that's my current writing mindset. Um, I'm trying to finish projects and submit them to the proper places and, and move forward. Um, yeah, get things done, move on to new ideas, um, accomplish things. Uh, of sorts so that's that's kind of what I'm gonna use the month of August to do is is finish things get things done off my plate uh, thanks for the uh, reminder about the mic I'm just yeah streaming streaming is hard this it, it is what it is so uh, what else do I have to repeat? Because I forgot to turn my mic on. Um, yeah. Last week, uh, if you're following along last week, the interactive fiction piece, I finished that. I didn't want to spend a ton of time on it uh, because I want the technical side of it to work. So uh, I'm not going to expand it or, or build a bigger thing until that I've gotten all of those little other Unity details sorted out. So there's that. Um, but I did finish the prototype part. So that's great. Um, I want to get Fear the Siren done. Um, what else? Anything else? Anything else I'm thinking? Oh yeah, I'm still trying out this new time. I want to see what's up. Um, as always, uh, check out the website if you want to uh, get in contact with me. Let me know, feedback, whatever. Uh, send me a thing. Send me a thing. Hey, Drowning, what's up? So, let's get her done. Um, yeah, all right. Special setups, okay. Oh, and uh, Greg the Gorilla Pod is back for today only. Okay, I'm moving, I'm gonna move around my, uh, my VR cameras tonight so I can have my Gorilla Pod back, yay! because uh, I need it. <laughs> this is going to be a weird angle, but it's out of my way, which is nice. Uh, maybe a slight adjustment here. Does it? But it's out of my way. I can adjust it, I suppose. Doing my thing. So, uh, editing, fun process. <laughs> as long as you guys can read it, that's the important part.
Because having to, uh... Don't really want to read every line as I go through it, but I am going to try and talk through my perspective. A little bit here. Um. I'm just thinking through this storytelling of sorts. And by storytelling, I mean my character is telling a story. Um, this is uh, Persinoe the Siren. So I'm just trying to get some good phrasing moments here, figure out what can be improved. So like, I feel like there's a lot of vagueness in this part of the story. Like she is being intentionally vague in a weird way. And I don't like it. I think it needs to... Like, uh, I don't like that I keep using and this. Like, it's not very... It doesn't flow as well as I would like. some details here. Hey question, what's up man? There should be a comma here. Punishes again with sending us back to the land.
So if anyone has any questions, feel free to um, ask them. I will do my best to answer as much as I can. Um, but yeah. I don't know if I agree with this. Oh, I forgot this pen is black. I need a, I need a blue pen. Blue pen. Where are you? You're down here. Pen. Perfect. So my big issue here with this paragraph is that it seems to me Um, it seems weird that she's cool with telling her origin story, but not what happened to her arm. did this play out? Us more feelings.
that's that. Interesting. Would uh, a paranor know about the story of Odysseus? Actions seem contradictory. Why did they not survive? really interesting to me um like I haven't worked on this story in two three weeks now so I only work on it on stream in the last couple I was doing uh that interactive fiction stuff so it's really interesting to me a how easy it is to jump right back into this for me um but also just how how we remember little weird details about this story. Uh, like I remember thematically what I'm trying to go for on an intellectual level, but I'm I feel it as well, um, and that's that's very interesting to me. Let's fact check this. I like it. But uh, I need to check some things. Did the sirens visit Hades? Yeah, and then I immediately, oh, I don't like it. Immediately after saying, like, how weird it is that she's cool with one story but not the other, he's like, I have a funny feeling. So there's something she isn't telling him. It's like, okay. It's kind of my character is calling out my autorial weirdness in a lot of ways. Don't like it. And I like this part for the most part, this section, but I feel like, uh, I feel like this needs to be less Hyperinor jumping to a conclusion. And more him uh, him 
him. How to describe what I what I mean? I don't want her to necessarily just state everything outright, though that feels a little bit better than what's currently on the page. But at the same time, I don't want him jumping to conclusions. I kind of want a more easy to follow logical process. All right. Page 12 done. Yeah. This should be expanded. I want to tell more about this story. expand a little bit on this phrase separately. Show us her thought process. Well, not exactly a typo. I think this is a better indicator for what I'm doing here. Yeah, Zodnik, Zodnik. I know who Chiron is, but I'm not sure Chiron's come up in the context of this story yet, so I think that's a detail piece that might need to be edited. Um, 
And why? Why do they need to get him to a safe place? It was something I asked earlier and uh, earlier on in the story. Where Hyperanor uses Zodnik's information to find the siren. But the siren is trying to protect Zodnik. Though people can find Zodnik, but not the Siren. And if that seems confusing to you, it's because it is. It confuses me, too. It doesn't make any sense. Um, or at least not in the right ways. So I'm trying to massage some of these details about that relationship and the way that that works into a better logical process. Just need more better verbs in this category here. This is a little weird and sarcastic. This comes across that's really weird too because it's like you know kind of being a weird dramatic frustrated teen He doesn't know what to say. I 
makes no sense. I kind of feel like this part of the conversation should occur earlier, but at the same time, I like its placement and in, in how they've developed together. Hmm. I have to think about that more. All right, general note here. Is this the best spot for the conversation about injuries? So I know to look at that later specifically. I think this tense is odd. This stuff is consistent throughout the entire story. The details about the uh, fantasy elements I need to really work on my attributions. This jump is odd. I like the references, but it feels weird. Yeah, uh, for sure, guys. It's it's very much a symptom of of being okay. You don't want to be okay. You want to push. You want to keep pushing until you get something better. Um, it's difficult. It's difficult because it's a fine line. Um, I know a lot of people, creative people, talk about this, but it's a fine line between knowing when to push and when to accept it as being finished at what point is it okay to just leave it um this is my first editing pass 
So I'm okay with pushing right now. There's no reason for me not to push right now. I mean, that's the whole point of doing editing. Um, but, you know, after this draft, maybe that's when I need to learn or that's when I need to put my emphasis on different things. Um, yeah, well, that's the thing about, about drawings and stuff is it seems a lot clearer when it's written right on the text. When it's written, hey, this sucks, do something better. Uh, in drawing, you just kind of paint over the parts that you don't like and move on. Um, it's a little different. It's not as obvious to people with an untrained eye. See, I'm not sure this makes sense. I'm not sure. I mean, I don't draw either. It's just, I spend a lot of time with artists, so I see it more than most. I think there's a lot of similarities that people don't take into account between those types of creative fields and even with music uh, and some other stuff. And keep in mind, as part of this editing process, I don't have to answer every single question. And I'm probably asking more questions than I actually want in the text. I'm just trying to figure out from uh, an author standpoint, all those little nuances that can influence psychology and can influence the way characters, way characters interact with each other. Uh, on a level beyond conscious thought in a way where I'm aware of their psychology. I'm aware of their thought process. I'm aware of those little subconscious ticks and movements and things like that. And those are an important part of, of how we describe characters, how we play characters, how we push characters. Um, it can be difficult. It can be difficult to communicate those things. That's why I'm asking all those whys and hows. It's not necessarily that I want the text to be there. So I'm not, don't, like, if I flip back here. Like, I'm not saying tell this second, this third story. But I'm saying what, what details of this story influence this conversation? What can I pull from it? What can I allude to? Um... What can I um, use to change their interaction so it makes more sense? Um, yeah. Yeah, I think, I think you get the idea of, of what I'm going for there. See, and I love this line. I love that line. But I want to charge it 
with more internal thought. I really want to get hyper hyperinors. Oh yeah, that's a great that's a great way of putting it. Uh, is it Kadern? I've been not pronouncing it on purpose because I for fear of messing it up. Uh, but feel free to uh, <laughs> correct me. But yeah, what can I write between the lines? That's exactly what I'm going for. Like it's. It's weird. Um, it's something that I've learned a lot from writing screenplays and working in film. Because uh, that's what I studied in school. Where you want dialogue to reveal something about character. You want those little bits um, to influence. Um... Yeah. It's like, um, if I can talk about it in a drawing way, uh, my simile here, uh, it's like using the absence of space to show space as much as using space to show space, if that makes sense. I think it does. Like what they're not saying is almost as important as what they're saying. And how they're saying something is important. See, and I feel like this should be way earlier in the story. But I like uh, a lot of what's been sent, said here. And I feel like, how did this happen? Show us the monster. <laughs> well, I guess the better example would be to use music. Uh, and this is something that's used a lot in uh, Japanese films and not so much if uh, not so much in uh, North American films as much but the use of silence to um, the use of silence in the midst of, of sound in order to create space um, good examples are, uh, the best example that I can think of is when a grenade goes off, uh, or a bomb where you get that kind of ringing silence and that has way more impact than just more sound because it's an absence of sound. Um, I think. That might be even more confusing, and I apologize if it is, but that's kind of my thought process along this. So this is um, this is a little too subtle. this 
It's unnecessary. I love this line. mark there um, I think this word sucks This is actually going significantly faster than I thought it would. Um, possibly because I'm not super distracted today and I'm very driven to just finish. Um, so there's certainly that. But yeah, there's not a ton left. Anyway, uh, it's it's 10 to, uh, 10 to 1 uh, Eastern, my time. Yeah, it's probably a typo. There's a bunch of them. <laughs> Attempted just to write gobos because I kind of like describing them like that. Anyway, that is something I do want to fact check uh, and I'll write that down. I want to see how slash if if slash how uh, goblins are referenced in Greek mythology I don't know if they are I kind of assume they were uh, mostly because goblins are very are probably one of the most uh, common myths internationally or something similar to them anyway uh, but that is something i do want to fact check so i will write that down but yeah um it's five to one i'm gonna take a five minute break i'll be back at one o'clock um so yeah i'll see y'all then <laughs>